Problem F34 says the block has a mass of 5 kilograms and rests on the smooth plane. Then we're asked to determine the unstretched length of the spring. So at first glance, this problem might seem a little bit intimidating given that we have a spring in the configuration below, but it's actually not as hard as it looks. The only thing you need to know really is that when you stretch a spring, it's going to tend to produce a sort of tension-like force which is called the spring force. And the reason I say it's tension-like is because, for example, here, the weight of the block is gonna to tend to stretch the spring, and that spring is always trying to go back to its original length. So it's essentially pulling upwards away from the block, just like a tensile force. And now for a linear elastic spring, like the one in this problem, the spring force, Fs, is equal to the spring constant or stiffness k times the deformation or displacement s, and that's of the spring. And so knowing this equation alone, and of course a little bit of statics, you'll be able to easily tackle this problem. Since we said that s is deformation, s will simply be equal to the stretched length of the spring minus the unstretched or original length of the spring. So here L is the stretched length and L naught is the unstretched length. And so in this problem we are asked to find the unstretched length so we're looking for L naught. So now that we've become familiar with this information we can now sketch our free body diagram. So here our point of interest is the block since that is essentially where all the forces are acting on. So I will be sketching the block here along with the weight of the block and again we know that weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity and then of course on top we have the spring force and like I mentioned before this essentially acts as a tensile force so it's pointing outwards as the spring is trying to compress back into its original state and as you can see we have an inclined plane at 45 degrees so to help facilitate this problem I'm gonna go ahead and tilt our coordinate axis just like so following the 45 degree inclination and so since I tilted the axis our mg is no longer directly vertical along the y-axis it is now 45 degrees away from the y-axis just like so and then of course since fs acts in a coplanar direction or it has both an x and y component we can go ahead and break them down to FSX and FSY. And since we're not given a specific angle for the spring, we can go ahead and simply just use a slope triangle that relates the 0.4 meters and the 0.3 meters. So now to help visualize this, I'm just going to go ahead and redraw a larger triangle that resembles the one in the given picture. And now here we see that we essentially have a 345 triangle, so our hypotenuse will be 0 0.5. And of course you can just double check this by using the Pythagorean theorem, which indeed gives you 0 0.5 meters. So now that we have all sides of the triangle, we can go ahead and add this relationship onto our slope triangle. Here I'll just simply use 345. Doesn't matter if it's decimals on the problem, it's still the same ratio. So that completes our free body diagram of the system and we can now move on to the equilibrium of the system and that is in order to find Fs. So here we can start off by setting the sum of forces in the x direction equal to zero and here we're assuming diagonally to the right is positive. So here we are focusing on the x component of Fs that is Fsx. And since we are using a slope triangle, we can go ahead and implement uh, proportions in order to represent Fsx in terms of Fs. So here we have Fsx over Fs, and we'll set that equal to the component that's along Fsx, which is 4, over the component that's along the Fs direction, which is 5. And here we can isolate fsx so we'll have fsx 
equals four fifths times fs. So we can go ahead and write that down on our sum of forces in the x direction. And again, because we rotated our coordinate axis, the downward weight now has two components. So it has one in the y direction and one in the x direction, just like so. And now knowing the mass of the block, we can now find weight by setting w equal to mg. We have five kilograms, which is the mass, times the acceleration due to gravity g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. And so from this, the weight of the block is equal to 49.05 newtons. And now to find the x component of the weight, I'm just going to clear up some room here. We want to find wx. And so essentially we want to break down w into its x component. So if we imagine this being a triangle formed by wx down here, I'll go ahead and redraw that on the right here. Just like this. We can go ahead and use trigonometry to find wx. Since wx is opposite to the 45 degrees, we can go ahead and use sine. And so we know that sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And so plugging this in, I'm just going to rewrite this as sine 45 degrees equals wx divided by w. And hence wx equals w sine 45 degrees which of course ends up as 49.05 sine 45. And now notice that the arrow points in the negative x direction. So this is going to be minus 49.05 sine 45. And so that completes our equation. And we can now solve for Fs, which again is the spring force. And so now rearranging this and solving using a calculator, we get Fs equals roughly 43.35 newtons. And so we now know the value of the spring force. And so that means that we can now use our spring force equation from earlier and solve for L naught. So of course, Fs equals K times S, and we can rewrite this as K times L minus L naught, which is S. And here we have already found the value of L, which was the 0.5 meters, since that's the stretched length of the spring. And then the problem already gives us the value of K, which is 200 newtons per meter. So now plugging in our known values, we have the 43.35 newtons equals 200 newtons per meter times 0.5 meters minus L naught. And as you can see, we can now simply solve for L naught. So we can first divide the 200 to the other side of the equation. And here we can see that the newtons cancel out, which is what we expect since we're going to be left with meters. And so simplifying this, we have 0 0.21675 meters equals 0 0.5 meters minus L naught. Hence from this, we end up with L naught equals roughly 0 0.283 meters, which is again the original unstretched length of the spring.